What is going on guys? Wiser here. I am coming to you with one of our next Theorycraft series videos, uh, the first introductory video to that series uh, about base building. Um, I am here with one of One Hive's base building gurus. Uh, he is a member of Invicta. Uh, Cad, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine, Wiser. Thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, I'm glad we kind of got our heads together on this and uh, have decided to to move forward with this base building um, series, we'll call it, because there is just so much to base building that you just can't you can't jam it all into one video. It's it's literally impossible. It'd be an hour long video, um, longer than that potentially. So, um, Cad Cad uh, reached out to me a little a little while ago, and. Uh, came up with this idea to, to come out with a series and talk about the different aspects of base building just because it's so intricate. Um, another huge thing that sparked us doing this was the recent departure of 2.0's uh, base building architect, we can call him uh, Iron Wolf. Actually, he retired from the game. Uh, was a very sad loss for One Hive, but he definitely uh, did well with uh, the Wolf Pack, we call them. And uh, we have a handful of guys left in the clan that, that we really look to now for our base building tips and techniques. Uh, Cat is definitely one of those guys. So um, we are we are going to work on uh, bringing you guys some really good content on, on how to build bases here. Um, so for our introductory video, we want to talk about uh, Iron Wolf uh, had a set of rules for us that he passed down through the clan. Um, if your base did not meet these rules or requirements, if you want to call them, uh, we would not look at your base or tweak your base. You needed to fix those those general generalized things um, before we would go into base tweaks and move in little trap locations or buildings around and make things a little better. So um, let's just hop over and look at the base we have decided to use as an example. Now, CAD just threw this base together. It has some very poor examples of some things, some very good examples of some things. Uh, again, a very example type of base. Um, but CAD, if you looked at this base at first without the traps, you wouldn't necessarily say this is a bad base. Would you agree? No, you would definitely not. It's, uh, it seems like a well laid out base, hard to hit. It, uh, it's anti-3. Um, as your first hit, I would have to think a long time to hit it properly. Yeah. Um, now, so this is this is kind of where where the game lays because you can throw walls up, you can throw buildings in, and if they're not set up properly, it doesn't matter, right? You're gonna get three starred. And not saying, yeah. I mean, technically any t town hall nine is three starable. It's just how many attempts is it gonna take for them to get there? So exactly. With that in mind. Um, we kind of design this base, or you design this base, I should say, so we can have these specific examples to talk about. So I'm just going to go over the rules of, of the things that Iron Wolf talked about and drilled into our heads that at least as a bare minimum, your base needs to meet these requirements for it to be tweakable, right? Um, so the first rule um, wasn't actually the first rule. We kind of swapped some things around just for uh, uh, simplicity's sake, I guess, of the video. But um, the first rule is the base has to be around anywhere between 10 to 15 compartments. Um, yes. Now, Cad, can you explain to us why it, your base needs to at least meet that minimum com, uh, compartment requirement? Well, first of all, the very most simple version of attacks are the go wipe and go e. Even though in a clan like One Hive, we don't really recommend those uh, strategies to get a three star on a base, you still want to defend against those. So if you have a base with, uh, for example, even eight or seven compartments, there's a mass golem attack with uh, wizards would even wreck your base because there's nothing stopping them really. Yeah, n never mind witches or pekkas. I mean, you throw a few pekkas exactly. in there and they only have a few compartments to get through, you're in trouble. <laughs> yep. Um, so that that is a definitely a bare minimum requirement because when you're designing bases, you can't forget about two star attacks that potentially, if you don't defend against those two star attacks and make them two star attacks, you're going to get three starred by a go wipe. And obviously you don't want that. So um, so if we look at this base, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All right. So we did meet that requirement. So this is this is why we kind of made this base because it does meet some of the requirements and it doesn't meet a lot of the other requirements. So um, we're going to show you why this base is not a good base in, in an overall sense. Um, but it does meet the requirements of, of the the 
amount of compartments that we need. So that is good. So rule number one, uh, check. Uh, let's move on. Rule number two, it has to be asymmetrical um, with an offset queen. I added in uh, with an offset queen. Uh, back when we made these rules, the centralized queen was being phased out. Um, and we're going to explain why real quickly. Imagine if, um, imagine if this queen wasn't here. It was where this clan castle was. Okay, I tell me where you could attack that base from at that point. Well, basically from any angle you want, except for like the top compartment, because that would be really far away. And even there, you could come in with, uh, for example, a double jump. Yep. So if your queen would be on top of this uh, CC. You could choose any angle you want and get a lot of value for your kill right. squad compared to an offset queen. Pretty much, you know, any of those walls, you could get access to the queen with a wall break and a jump. And not even a jump because she's going to jump over those walls from that clan castle. So Yep, she is. Um so the centralized queen has been phased out for that fact it's more difficult to protect her it's also more difficult um for an attacker to take her out and take out important things in your base at the same time um so i added that in there as part of the asymmetry because as well if your base is symmetrical and i can't you know this is another back to the basics rule if your base is symmetrical it's just easy to to know where everything is and if people know that at, at you know you, in a lower tier war that might not matter as much but once you start facing a good attacker who actually plans their attacks and looks at a base and decides where he's going to send everything in it you don't want him to know where your stuff is you just don't like that it, it, it makes it too it makes it that much easier for him it doesn't make it an automatic three star but when you can, when you know where the double giant bombs are, and you know have an idea where the Teslas are from the first hit, you're you're not setting yourself up for success. So, um, asymmetrical guys has to be as uh, someone put it as ugly as you can possibly make this guy, the better. Uh, another little thing that someone brought up about asymmetry, I don't know if I saw it in a video before or maybe it was just uh, talking in Teamspeak, but the eye has a problem registering things when something doesn't look right. Like if something looks all jumbled, it's a lot harder just to stare at something and envision how you attack something, right? Envision where your troops are gonna go. Just because of the, you know, you look at something, your eye looks at something that just doesn't look normal, a completely messed up wall design and, and building design, it, it doesn't allow your brain to register things as easy. We'll just we'll just say it say it like that. Um, so asymmetry guys it has to be asymmetrical it, those symmetrical bases just do not work uh, we've proved this time and time again um, so we're going to move on from that rule because uh, that's pretty pretty standard stuff um, so asymmetrical offset queen we're going to go into the next rule which is don't put stuff in poor locations now this is a pretty generalized rule a pr that's a pretty generalized statement we'll just say right because that can mean anything um now, Cad, we had uh, you had moved some things around in this base to purposely show some examples of poor locations of things, whether it be a trap or a building. Can you just point those out to us and, and explain what I'm talking about? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, the most obvious one is uh, this Tesla in the corner. Uh, it can really trip mm -hmm. you up in the first hit. So if you want to protect your base from uh, getting three stock on the first hit, um, that would be a really good idea. But if you're specifically trying to defend against a three-star attack and uh, trying to defend as many attacks as possible, uh, that Tesla is not going to stand the second attack because someone's just going to drop a loon on top of it and it'll, it'll be gone. And uh, as well, uh, for example, this uh, black mine over there, um, it's pretty much the same story. Uh, it will take out a loon, but it will only take out one balloon. Well, think about and dropping one, one minion on that on that wizard tower takes out two air traps with one only minion. one but oh, I, uh, the black one is not going to trigger oh, but that's yes not it will minions. take out yeah, the red that's ball. right or yeah. or just one balloon one balloon will take out both you won't get the wizard tower it will tower, take out but, both and that's yeah. huge value actually yeah yeah and another uh, good example of that is this spring trap uh, at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. that spring trap will trigger the first time it will trigger a trip probably three hawks at the start if someone were to come in there but it's not going to help because only one hawk would trigger it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and once it's on the outside, it's easily uh, diffusible, right? You, you could just throw a one yes. hog in it. However, also, I mean, if you think of it as the hogs coming from the other angle, not from the wall, but say say your hogs are coming at it from here. Well, your hogs are just going to go there or there or there, right? That spring trap is a completely one-way spring trap, as we call it, right? Yep. <clears throat> The only possible way it's going to get triggered is if hogs come in here and stop on that mortar right there. That is the only possible way it's going to get used. And and if you do happen to be un the unfortunate guy that happens to send in his pack of hogs on that mortar, uh, well, the cleanup attack is going to be super easy because, you know, you just don't send in your hogs there and it's it's useless. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to point out? Um, some th easy things to take out. Um, this one is a bit hard to spot. But this air defense is actually, um, you can target it with an arc, Archer Queen from over that wall. Mm -hmm. It's only three spaces in, so you can target it with a Queen Walk. So that air defense is really easy to target. And not only is it an air defense, also the double bomb set is there. Yeah, so the fact that the air defense you can easily get with a Queen Walk you would be not only taking out you'd be you'd be it's a two and one there right you you're not only losing your air defense but your double giant bomb is now completely screwed because there's it's no wasted. defense between it yes so um those are some great examples of that because um if your archer queen can do a walk and defuse a double giant bomb with you know only three healers on her back your base is in trouble because it, all you got to do from that point is send in your king with some golems at the queen Make sure the CC is taken care of. You've now taken care of the CC, the Queen, and a double giant bomb set and an air defense with a Queen walk and maybe a golem or two and a handful of wizards and your heroes. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a great great point. Um, so yeah, guys, just you got to think about where you're putting your stuff. You have to think about where your 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 traps are going. You have to think about where your buildings are going and why and and what is going to happen when stuff gets deployed on them okay so let's move on to the next rule uh, which i had was give up the least for the most um i kind of simplified the uh, wolf's rule into that statement because it, it what what it means is you know generally you're going to get attacked with the kill squad well, you got to envision where is that kill squad going to come in and what do they get for it? Well, you know you know everyone's going to be going for your archer queen. So I, I use the queen chamber as an example. Well, what are the ways that we can, as a kill squad, can take out this archer queen? Well, she's right beside this wall, so you know she's going to hop in right beside this double giant bomb. So if you look at this entry and you drop a golem on that wizard tower, a golem I guess that Tesla, let's pretend that Tesla's not there, but even if it was, it would die instantly. Um, and your golem stands on that wall there. You wall break that wall. So your kill squad's going to come in here. You don't even need a jump spell. And you're going to get an air defense or two, a double giant bomb, the archer queen, an air sweeper, a crossbow, essentially taking out a, a black mine out of the picture, right? Like, that is just not good <laughs> that is a lot of stuff that basically two golems um a few wall breakers a few wizards and your heroes could could manage right like like i think a shattered entry would get you all of that no problem and you're free to do whatever you want on the rest of the base because the base is crippled at that point you have you have your options from that point because especially if you got that second air defense like if you threw a jump down there with your kill squad you'd probably get both air defense the queen all of that stuff well that only leaves two air defense that leaves all these defenses on this backside uh, free of air defense you know you would send a couple la if you'd have three lava hounds to send on those two and balloons to just sprinkle around and your base is going to be in serious trouble um so you, you got to think of that you got to think of where does your kill squad where is a kill squad going to come in to try and get your queen and all the other things they need to get and how do they do it and what do they get so that that this queen chamber is, is really not a good queen chamber because she could even potentially hop in just it maybe that's a maybe but she still could she could hop in right there so if you come from the you know one of these bottom bottom angles like say you came in from here and you wall broke and you tossed a jump down over there 
You know, your kill squad's going to go straight up. You know, you bring, say you bring in a stone goho, you're going to get a double giant bomb. You're going to get the queen. You're going to get the CC. You're going to get a huge, huge section of the base, pretty much. And then all you need to do is worry about this last double giant bomb, whether you hog it or, or you know, loon it at that point. Um, it's really hard to say. But, again, this queen chamber would be a huge problem um, going against a guy who knows what he's doing in a and concerning attacking um, because he can really get to her from any point and whatever point he decides to, to take he's gonna get a double bomb and he's gonna get an air defense or two <laughs> and uh, it's just not good um, so really you want to try and focus on when you're when you're trying to set it up and you think of the possible ways a kill squad could come in to get your queen you want to try and do your best to make sure there's the least amount of valuable buildings in the way or valuable things, whether it's bombs or spring traps. I think I had a few things written down here. Um, where was it? Um, no, I guess I don't. <laughs> uh, I had, to, I swear, I had some things written down. Uh, <laughs> but whether it be like adult two spring traps, um, an archer queen kind of thing. Oh yeah, I did have it right here. Uh, you know, so when I'm talking about valuable targets, valuable structures of your own, uh, first of all, the defensive arch queen is your most valuable defensive structure. Um, let's just make that clear. Um, so I label that as number one. Number two is your clan castle troops. You got to wonder, well, where are they going to pull the clan castle troops from? Is it is it an easy lure? Um, are they going to be able to take out those troops um, while they get the queen at the same time? Um, double giant, uh, double giant bombs or single bombs, right? You do not want a kill squad to be able to come in and take out a double giant bomb at the same time as your queen. That's just you cannot have that. It, it, their people are going to exploit that and hog you because they're going to take out a bomb, they're going to take out your queen, they're going to get the CC, and they're just going to hog the rest, and it, you don't stand a chance. Um, the Barb King, the Barb King is another important hero. He might not seem like it sometimes, but in this example, you could easily swap this Barb King. You know, he is he is a little exposed. I mean, I don't mind a Barb King protecting a double giant bomb set, um, but you know, he is he is exposed. He is a, a a unit that you need to think about in defense because you want him kind of offset from the queen. I mean, not always. Sometimes you want him protecting your queen. There's certain base designs, and we'll, we're we're going to be doing some episodes of this, and we'll get into some more advanced types of base design. But you, you generally want your king protecting either a double giant bomb set or your air defense, something like that. Something that's going to stall a kill squad. That's basically all, all he does, right? He slows things up. Um, not to mention, have you ever seen a king running around after a group of hogs? Well, he can do some serious damage. If he gets caught up, on, if hogs get caught up on some of these some of these buildings, the king's beating on them the whole time. They need to heal. It, it forces a heal. Um I also had, you know, springs, especially if you have two or more spring traps in a location that uh, a kill squad could conveniently come in and get your queen. We well, you also don't want to give them all your spring traps because the spring traps are really going to thin out the hogs on the back end. I mean, if you have six spring traps, around three hogs per spring trap, that's potentially 18 hogs you could get rid of with spring traps. Well, not many people bring more than around, you know, anywhere between 20 and 22 and 30 hogs at most. So think about if you all of your spring traps got rid of all hogs at max value. Well, that's huge. That stops the raid completely. Um, uh, what else do they have? Tesla farms, uh, things like that. I mean, Teslas, we're going to have a whole different discussion about, about traps. Um, but as it, you can kind of do some different things. It depends on the base design. But you don't want to easily give up Teslas. Um, with a couple golems uh, with your queen kind of thing if you are you want to make sure that they are forcing to put put an investment this is part of the statement i made saying um give up the least for the most this isn't too bad of a base uh, of an archer queen chamber in the sense of what would you have to invest to get the queen there well you'd have to invest at least a couple gol at least a golem Say you send in a golem and some funneling troops and your king and queen there. Even not your queen. Just to get the queen. You, you would need at least a golem, at least your king, and at least some funneling troops. Well, that's a success. If you're costing someone 40 troop space just to get your queen, 
I think that's a success in itself, right? So we're going to get into queen chamber sizing and stuff like that as we go on. Um, but uh, that basically uh, that basically covers that, uh, guys. The statement, all I can really, uh, the, the way I, only way I could sum it up was give up the least for the most, right? You want the person to spend the most troop space and time. Time is another huge valuable resource that people overlook in this game. If you can cost someone time and lots of troop space for a small value, then you've had a success. And that's that's the only way I can sum it up. So um, obviously this base does not uh, uh, really uh, example that very well, but that was the whole purpose of making this base. So, um, And the last rule was optimize pathing. Um, so for example, uh, we made this compartment here just to show you what poor pathing is. Because this, this double giant bomb doesn't work. And let me explain why. Right here, Cad, why don't you explain why? <laughs> well, first of all, uh, imagine coming in with hogs from on this wizard tower. Uh, if this wizard tower is down, because you, of course you're going to have to kill the archer queen. So imagine you came from the top with, a, say, a cold blooded or even shattered entry. You would get this and kill this whole section. If you were to then come from this wizard tower, where would the hogs go? Well, they jump over here and go to the archer tower and tripping the first of the bombs. Yep. And uh, that's another really good point. Uh, these uh, three defenses are placed in a triangle around the DGB. That forces the hawks pretty much to, uh, to trip them one at a time because they will always go to the closest defense uh, there is next to them. Yep. So even if they were to come in uh, from the three o'clock position, like say this uh, cannon, uh, they cleared out the wizard tower and the archer tower. They would be moving in towards the the mortar, expo, air defense, and then up to the uh, sweeper. So they would only trigger this south uh, bomb, this uh, bottom, making yeah. the whole set yeah vulnerable to hogs, even though there's a double bomb spot. Yep. So on the short side of your bombs, guys. And this has to be more exaggerated than you'd actually think to make your double giant bomb work. Like Cad mentioned, this whiz tower, you might not think it's close enough to affect it. It is. It really needs to be either out, you know, maybe this elixir storage, if you swap them, might work because they it would come to this side and then across. Obviously, if these buildings weren't here, is what I'm talking about. But... Regardless, you really do need to exaggerate that there are no defensive structures anywhere. Like I would say something like that going out yes, from, the that, from the short side. And that's really well um, portrayed in the south end of this base. Right here, you can see a really clear funnel from either side of the DGB spot. Like all of these hogs will either move into the double bomb or move out to other defenses and into yep. the other uh, bomb spots. Because if we so, look, let's do the same thing I just did. Let's draw the line, draw the line, draw the line, draw the line. There are no defenses in that radius of that short side, right? So like you said, anything's coming to that Tesla and across. Anything's coming to that and across. I mean, yeah, they might go up to that mortar, but again, you can't, you can't avoid that if they if they go back up but even still if they're if they're on here i mean you're getting hogs going to that double giant bomb so you're forcing the pathing to your double giant bombs yep and another really important thing to mention is um for example here on the south side there's four defenses before you hit the double bomb spot so you're either forcing a heal or something they have to invest a lot of hogs to get to the double bomb spot like on the other side, there was uh, would only be one wizard tower or one air defense to get through to get to the double bomb spot. Down yep. here in the south, you need to invest a lot uh, to get it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, <laughs> one thing we talked about too was how uh, how frustrating base design can become because as you kind of figure things out um, and and have successes in some of your designing, you will tend to notice that one success leads to something else failing. <laughs> Where we we brought up a good point, so although that south di double giant bomb it is perfect for fog pathing, right? Well, what is the other problem with it? What is the problem with that double giant bomb? 
I ask you, Ked. <laughs> well, the first problem I see is if, say, you were to bring a queen walk over here, starting from either side, really, uh, because there's a really easy funnel on these. Uh, nice, convenient army, army camp. Yep. They're really convenient. They're terrible for base design. Um, you would get this uh, wizard tower down. She, she's easily able to reach it from either side. Yep. So that would pretty much eliminate the whole spot. Yep, she can absolutely, a queen walk would pretty much take out, you know, all that stuff. And then in one walk with three healers and a queen, you've now completely negated a double giant bomb, which leaves the rest of the base completely open. Now you could come in with your king and shattered entry from that point, get the other double giant bomb and the queen. You know, you would pull the CC to the queen walk. And now what? You've taken out both double giant bombs, the defensive queen, the defensive CC, and the rest of the base is toast, no matter what you decide. Right? There's just nothing that's going to stop. A just hog drop hogs anywhere that's and it. wreck it. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> base designing is frustrating. We all, I mean, I know I've sat there at times. I'll hit a wall where I, I just don't know what to do. Um, Cat, as a last piece to this introductory video to our uh, our base building series, um, I want you to tell tell how, how run us through how you from scratch decide to build the base. Okay, so the first thing I personally do, this is up to personal preference, of course, is uh, placing the Archer Queen down. She's the most important defense in your base, so keep that in mind. Um, I like to protect her really well. So uh, I place a whole compartment outside of her uh, own compartment even to make sure she's protected. Um, and then there's a really important rule about your queen. She will generally not jump farther than three spaces unless she's locked onto something. So if you have a, a three space around your queen and outside of that you've got the wall, she will never jump out and she will stay where she is. So in that way she's safe. So that's a, a major starting point. Uh, then, currently, uh, the ADs are the most important defenses after that, together with the, the giant bomb spots. Like, uh, it must not be possible, as we just dis discussed, to get a giant bomb spot easily and the queen. So, in this example, the southern bomb spot is really far away from the queen, which is really good, because it forces you, uh, the attacker, to make a choice. To either go all the way through the base, or come from from the other side and do a split kill squad, for example, making it really hard to attack. Same goes for the air defenses. In this case, uh, you can see that there's two air defenses really close to the queen, so that would make for a really easy entry here with a jump spell. So placing those first against the most common attacks um, it really helps you design the rest of the base around it. And um, wiser you, for example, you like to place your walls first, because in this base, even though I personally didn't even realize it at first, this compartment around the CC is eight spaces. So a good Perfect attacker earthquake. would see it immediately and earthquake it. An earthquake here, not open up the queen, uh, who's going to jump over both, the wall. Both bomb sets. Both double bomb sets, and if you want to, all four ADs. Yeah. So that's a really big weakness. So the third thing I really like to watch is uh, my compartment sizes. And can you throw an earthquake on them to walk over the base easily? Yeah, absolutely. And afterwards, it's uh, mainly a matter of filling and uh, trying to balance stuff out. Like, as I said, mm. the double bomb spots, they're really important. And in this case, I built this area first to make sure... Um, not only to leave out these trash buildings so the bad pathing can't happen, but also to make sure that the pathing towards the uh, double bomb spot is really good. Um, but while doing that, keep in mind, um, you also have to defend against the Lalo attack. And um, this is a really good example of a pretty bad defense against the Lalo. Because if you were to dro drop a Lava Hound in here, the loons have a really straight and clear path towards the air defense. So, to me, the most important part is placing your air defenses strategically so they can't be targeted with a queen walk, and then placing the double bomb spots to fit um, with that. 
Yeah. And then placing the compartments and filling it up. <laughs> and it's tough, guys. Like I, I don't know. I can't count how many times I've you know kind of placed all my walls. I, I decided where my queen chamber was gonna go. You start plopping those air defense down, and you're like, okay, those seem to fit. And then it's like, oh. Well, where am I going to put a double giant bomb set? That doesn't work. And you're not going to fit it, and you have to start all over again. And you start over again. That's how it goes. And again, there's, like I said, we're going to go into more detail about... um, about a lot of things we got some um some cool stuff coming up about specific episodes about pathing um chamber sizing arch queen chamber sizing and um cc compositions uh trap locations air trap locations uh lalo defense things like that um so we'll get into more detail about that kind of stuff but again th- these are some really good basics you can start with and um and at least have some successes with and even as you go you're going to kind of see some things yourself that okay well now that you're thinking about well don't put playing things in silly places i mean it seems like such a stupid silly rule but it, it's true right like every building should have a purpose of where it is and and you should be forcing pathing and you should be doing all these things that we just talked about um which isn't always the easiest thing to do, uh, but that that's what it takes to make a good base these days, a, a competitive base in uh, in the anti three star game, anyway. So, um, yep. And the only thing to really get good at it is try and fail, and try and fail, and yep. try again. You know, um, one of my last conversations I had with Iron Wolf, um, I said, I'm like, you know, when I first came to One Hive, uh, whatever it was like four or five, six months ago. Um, I did when you you're in your older these older clans. You I, I don't know how long I used the same war base for as an example, right? Because you just don't care. But in one hive, we basically have to build a new a new base almost every war. So you start building bases on a every few days basis at least it starts to get better and it starts to be easier. I mean, I used to struggle with it so much, and now I can at least get my walls down and be happy with that in a very pretty quickly actually now all right like i don't sit there and struggle and stare at it but it takes some work guys it takes some effort um you know i can't i can't stress how how uh important it is to to really just follow some of these guidelines and just start start building from there because you will see successes especially you know if you're not going up against um against some of these top war clans well i can tell you one thing if you take some time in your in your anti three-star town hall nine base no go wipes gonna three star you. <laughs> no, none of these, none of these older style of attacks are gonna get three stars on you. And as, as just being a member of your clan, that should be a huge success for yourself. If you you can say I'm the town hall nine that never gets three starred, that's awesome. You know, and that, that's our goal here for for everyone. So, um, do you have anything else to to add at this point, Cad? Um, for now, the only last basic thing I would mention is uh, trying to slow uh, the attacker down as much as possible. We've mentioned it a little bit, mm, but the yes. main defense against that is, of course, your town hall and the storages and your CC. Yep. So the highest hit point buildings. The highest hit uh, point buildings in the most important uh, places. So think about those. Try to fit them in your base. They're not always going to fit. Like in this example, I have the dark uh, elixir storage outside of the base. Um, just think about where you place them there's a lot of use in them um and they will really prevent anyone taking Go- out your queen for example going a little bit back to what i was saying about you got to think about where a kill squad is going to come in and what they're going to get and what's going to happen well you know if you have if someone's bringing in two golems eight wizards and their heroes well you know that queen is going to get has to shoot and the king has to hit those high hit point storages, right? So it's gonna take them a little bit. So you wanna start using them as shields for things, important things, like I talked about, like your air defense, your queen, um, any of your traps, right? I mean, you got one here. I mean, again, we didn't put too much much thought into this base, but that's that's what he's talking about. We, you need to use those high hit point storages, your town hall, your uh, clan castle and strategic locations. One thing I like to do, you know, I look at, you kind of have it here, where your arch queen is, well, pretty much in a kind of big square around her, you have scattered high hit point storages no matter what. So in a sense that you had some success with that because you know no matter what angle they're coming in at your queen, they're going to get stuck on something for a few seconds, right? They're not just going to walk right in through some builder's huts and take your queen, <laughs> right? So that, that was that's definitely a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yep. So the main uh, thing 
for other compartments as well is uh, think about uh, jumps as well. Like yeah. they will jump seven spaces and the earthquake is eight, eight spaces. So uh, when building compartments, which is uh, almost one of the most basic things, uh, make sure that central compartments are at least nine tiles wide so they can't earthquake you. Yes. Nine tiles is what you're going for. We're going to go into, like I said, we're going to have a compartment kind of building uh, episode coming up. However, uh, as a general rule, nine tiles by nine tiles square it cannot be jumped or earthquaked. So keep that in mind when you're building. Uh, obviously, you do not want all your compartments like that. But the ones that are are they're gonna a kill squad is gonna be coming into. You want that compartment they're coming into to be nine tiles because you do not want an earthquake or a jump spell to be, allow them access past that compartment, right? You, you want them yes. to jump into that compartment and stay there, and then that that is a huge success, right? So, um, like we had mentioned, this is a very poor centralized compartment because it's eight spaces. Someone's going to earthquake that and come in from six o'clock and have access to ninety percent of your base. So, definitely something to think about, guys. Uh, anything else, or should we wrap I this think one that's up? It. Okay, um, that uh, that does it. Thanks for coming out, uh, coming out, Cat. I look forward to doing these videos with you. Well, uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. That uh, that should do it for now. For your wisdom from Wiser, though, guys, just trying to help you guys bag that next three star. And until then, we're out. <laughs>